Hi, this is Brian Kim. I'd like to share with you in this video step-by-step -step instructions on how to perform double chop and cross chop showing diagram illustrations in a sample case. I've had some people come to me saying they tried the technique, they were discouraged because they had an anterior capsular tear or where they hesitate to do the technique because they're worried they're going to cause a complication. And I want to show this video to show very clearly where you should be placing the instruments. As long as you place the instruments correctly, there should be no anterior capsular tear. There should be no zonular dialysis doing these techniques. And the other thing I want to say is some people are trying to do this technique with the wrong instrument. So if you have a very small chopper, a short chopper, a pointy chopper, this is not the technique for that. Remember, every tool in surgery has a purpose. And those choppers are not designed for this technique. The chopper I use is a Kim double chopper made by Katina. I developed this instrument with Katina. I have no financial interest in that instrument. So here is a diagram of the eye. The yellow is the cortex. The epinucleus is in orange. And the endonucleus, which is in the center, is in red. You can see when you remove the epinuclear surface with the phago tip, you cause the removal of the epinucleus and the cortex. If you place the chopper on the surface of the endonucleus and slide it out to the periphery, it goes under the epinuclear ridge and it slides out into the capsular fornix. You rotate the chopper tip down and the chopper is now in good position between the epinucleus and the endonucleus and you'll be able to do the double chop and cross chop. In this configuration, there is no way you can cause an anterior capsular tear, a zonular dialysis, or some type of capsular complication due to the position of the chopper. The only way this can happen is if you have the chopper outside of the bag thinking you are in the bag, and then you pull the chopper in, you would cause an anterior capsule tear, or you would rip the bag or rip the zonules. I don't want this to happen to anybody. No patient deserves that complication. But again, you have to follow the instructions. You have to know what you're doing. And if you do it this way, you should not cause a capsular tear or a zonular complication. So let's look at a case. I'm going to lift the incision with my chopper and I'm going to go in with irrigation off to minimize decimase trauma. I'm going to remove the surface central epinuclear material. And as I do this, you can see that there is a round delineation of the removal of the epinucleus that I've done. And this is going to be where the epinuclear ridge is. Where my chopper is centrally now is the endonuclear surface. I'm going to go under the epinuclear ridge rotate my chopper in position, pointing the chopper down towards the nerve, and now the chopper is in the ready position. Most horizontal chopping surgeons are familiar with the chop movement from this point forward. You place the chopper out to the equator and you pull centrally, and that's the horizontal chop maneuver. Now I'm going to redirect our focus on the phaco tip. The phaco tip is going to be tilted vertically, and I'm going to stab the surface of the lens, but as I'm pushing with the chopper centrally, the counterforce is a phaco tip, and because I'm holding the lens with the chopper on the other side, I'm going to use the phaco tip to bury into the lens material and then start pushing the lens material with the phaco tip. This causes a fulcrum point where I'm actually catching and holding the lens, and then I'm able to cut through the lens and crush through the lens because of the two opposing forces of the chopper and the phaco tip. You can see the whitening of the lens material. As I'm bringing the instruments together, you can see I'm also kind of tilting and turning the phaco tip more in the horizontal position as the, both instruments are coming together. Again, you can see the whitening of the lens material. You can see it's going deeper and it's crushing the lens material. As I can feel in my fingers that the lens material is caught between the chopper and the phaco tip, I flatten it out and I do the horizontal movement, crushing the lens material, and this bisects the lens in half. Now you can see I'm just going to continue to perform some lateral separation to make sure that the chopper and the phaco tip have completely divided the lens material. There could be some posterior adhesions, which I believe there are here. And so I'm continuing to separate, 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 and you can see now that the lens is completely divided. I'm going to place the chopper out to the contralateral equator to do the cross chop maneuver. You can see the epinuclear ridge. I've placed my chopper in the ready position flat on the surface of the endonucleus. I'm going underneath the epinuclear ridge, rotating so the chopper tip is pointing downward. And then I'm going to pull the chopper centrally. And as I do this, it meets the phaco tip in the middle. 
and it bisects the right heminucleus, uh, performs some more lateral separation, and this causes the division of the right heminucleus into two pieces. Now I'm in the ready position again with the chopper in the flat position on top of the endonucleus. You see the epinuclear ridge, that is my target point. That is where I'm going to slide the chopper and making sure that the epinuclear ridge is above me. And then I have the finger tip under in a deep position. So then the chopper moves towards the finger tip. And because the finger tip is deep, it bisects that one piece. I then perform successive mechanical fracturing forces, crushing the lens pieces into bite-sized pieces and using a little bit of ultrasonic energy and then using quite a bit of high vacuum to emulsify the lens pieces. I'm using mechanical fracturing forces, crushing the lens pieces into bite-sized pieces, using primarily high vacuum to remove the lens pieces and then as needed using bursts of ultrasonic energy. And so that was the first quadrant. Now we're going to tackle the second quadrant. You can see the chopper is flat on the surface of the endonuclear material. You can see the epinuclear ridge. That is where I'm going to go. I'm going to slide the chopper underneath the epinuclear ridge. By sliding it under the epinuclear ridge, I'm making sure I'm inside the bag. I rotate the chopper, point at the tip down, pull the chopper towards the phaco tip. The phaco tip is in a deep position and it crushes the second quadrant and divides it in half. I begin mechanical fracturing forces, crushing the lens pieces into bite-sized pieces using high vacuum and then intermittent bursts of ultrasonic energy to remove the lens pieces. This is the second part of that second quadrant. I place the chopper out and then I'm crushing the lens piece between the chopper and the phaco tip. And I'm going to continue to do the mechanical fracturing where I'm bisecting and crushing the lens pieces into bite-sized pieces, orienting and manipulating the lens pieces so that I can maximally crush the lens piece between the chopper and the fingertip. Once the pieces are small enough, I'm going to start using high vacuum to emulsify the lens pieces. And when necessary, I will start to use bursts of ultrasonic energy to emulsify the lens pieces. So now the first and second quadrant are done. I'm rotating the last heminucleus in front of me. You can see the chopper is in the ready position on the surface of the endonucleus. You can see the epinuclear ridge. I'm gonna make sure I slide the chopper on the endonuclear surface. It's gonna go under the epinuclear ridge. The chopper is out and now the chopper is pointing down. The phaco tip is in a deep position. I pull the chopper centrally towards the phaco tip and this crushes and bisects the second heminucleus in half. Again, I place the phaco tip not terribly deep in the bag, but deep enough so that it will bisect the lens fragments. So make that clear. I am not placing the phaco tip extremely deep in the bag, just deep enough that I know it's gonna bisect that lens when the chopper is pulled towards the phaco tip. You can see the third and fourth quadrants are divided now. I'm just doing some lateral separation to make sure that the third and fourth quadrants are completely bisected. I'm using some vacuum to manipulate the lens piece for me, and then I'm crushing the lens piece between the chopper and the phaco tip. I'm using, again, bursts of ultrasonic energy as needed, but I'm primarily using high vacuum. I'm crushing the lens pieces using mechanical fracturing forces, crushing them into smaller pieces and using high vacuum to emulsify the lens pieces. And as needed, I'm using bursts of ultrasonic energy to remove those lens pieces. So now this is the final quadrant. I'm gonna place the chopper out to the equator, going underneath the epinuclear ridge. I'm pulling the chopper centrally. The phaco tip is in a deeper position. It crushes the girth of the lens piece and it's completely bisected. I'm going after another piece and I'm crushing the lens piece between the chopper and the phaco tip using mechanical fracturing forces, using high vacuum to emulsify the lens pieces, and then using bursts of ultrasonic energy as needed to remove the lens pieces. I'm using successive mechanical fracturing forces to crush the pieces and the bite-sized pieces to remove the lens pieces. So this is the final little piece. I'm making sure that chopper is definitely underneath the epinuclear ridge. I pull that lens piece 
out of the capsular fornix and now it's kind of in the middle of the bag and I'm able to manipulate that lens piece. I'm manipulating the lens piece so I can crush the lens piece between the chopper and the phaco tip. Once the lens pieces are broken up into smaller pieces and I'm chopping and crushing and crushing as I go, as a piece becomes smaller, I use high vacuum to emulsify the lens piece and using a little bit of ultrasonic energy. So at the end of the case here, I'm removing the epinuclear shell and I'm making sure I have the phaco tip somewhat superficial and the chopper is definitely deep in the bag when I do this maneuver to make sure I don't break the bag during this manipulation. I'm using the chopper to manipulate that epinucleus in a very safe manner. So why should you adopt this technique and why did I develop these techniques? The reason I developed double chop and cross chop was because I noticed that there were limitations with the techniques that I was doing and that I learned. I did divide and conquer, stop and chop, horizontal chop, vertical chop. A lot of these techniques are dependent upon the phaco. You have to sculpt, you have to hold and grab the lens. There are a lot of phaco dependent steps with those techniques. And double chop and cross chop, you really don't need to use the phaco except as a fulcrum or as a chopping tool in the very beginning of lens disassembly. When you're dividing the lens and then bisecting the right heminucleus, you're not using the phaco tip for ultrasonic energy or vacuum. You're just using it as a second chopper. And that's why it's called double chop. And so because of this, I've noticed that my cases are more consistent. I have had clearer corneas because I do the mechanical fracturing. And my complication rate, although it was low before, has diminished as well. And so anytime I've noticed surgeons having complications, it's usually because they're getting frustrated with a piece and it's stuck in the bag or it's somehow not, it's not coming out of the bag as they want to. And so you start to do stuff which you're not supposed to. You go a little bit too deep with the phaco tip in the bag. You use ultrasonic energy or vacuum that's too high within the bag. And then you have this complication. If you're able to mechanically crush the lens pieces between the chopper and the phaco tip, manipulate the lens pieces out of the bag with the chopper, feeling comfortable manipulating the lens within the capsular fornix, prolapsing lens pieces out of the bag, using the chopper and the phaco tip to crush the lens pieces. This is a very powerful tool, a powerful technique in my opinion. And so I have really not gone back. I have really moved forward and not gone back with any other techniques. In my opinion, this is really the single best way to do cataract surgery. And I hope that these tips that I've shown today will give you more confidence and more importantly, better execution of the technique. So I hope this was helpful to you. Please like and subscribe. And I thank you for your attention.